you guys, I am back. It is I, The Concrete Catwalk, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are returning, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you who are brand new and are just tuning in for the first time, hi, I am The Concrete Catwalk, and I am also on Instagram. Check me out at Concrete Catwalk on IG. And um, just to give you guys who are first, just now tuning in, brand new to my channel, um, I am a reseller. I sell gently owned, vintage, and gently pre-loved items. So that's anything from shoes to coats to handbags, accessories, etc., etc. So go check me out there, ha ha ha, and just take a look around. Um, and also, like I've done prior, I want to give a shout out to a business that reached out to me and asked if I would promote some of their things. And in a video in the future, you're going to see a couple of items that I am actually going to purchase from them and I'm going to give my feedback about what I think, what they look like. But that is actually Poppy Apparel. Um, they reached out to me and asked would I be a partnership with them or an ambassador for them and I agreed to go ahead and do it. This is my first time out so um, I'm going to leave the link to Poppy Apparel Shop so you can go there and look for some of the cutest items and I actually listed a couple up on Instagram and there's a full fur coat that I actually have my eye on like I need another full, full fur coat but it is actually to die for and yeah as you all know I turn my closet out every 18 months so make room for the new by getting rid of the old but anyway so thank you so much poppy apparel for partnering and letting me shout out some of your items on your site and i will leave the link in like i said the description below so you can you guys can go there and take a look but anyway let's get into it welcome everybody again like i said and um so we're gonna talk about something really personal to me because there there are actually or it is actually something that I have done a couple times and I don't, I don't think anybody has not done this before but <laughs> you know when you have that moment where you realize that you have missed the fashion mark when I say missed the fashion mark meaning you just whew, just went left over here um, yeah, you missed the fashion mark. So basically what we're gonna call that, getting all down to the to the meat and the bones and the grit and the gristle with this whole thing is the commission of the fashion faux pas. The fashion faux pas is what we're talking about today. And I'm just gonna kinda talk about some of the things that in making my own fashion horrendous mistakes that I've kind of pieced together. And look, you know what? This is not a perfect science. This is not a situation where I'm pretending to be an expert because I'm not. I'm just sharing some things that I've gone through and some knowledge that I've picked up in terms of my history, my relationship with fashion and, and things that, you know, I think we all come to realize as we go through th this thing and we're interested in, in fashion and things and how they work, you, you, you definitely get a clearer picture and an understanding, not just for, you know, what you see out there, but what, what is going to work or not work or is a disaster for you, for me. So, the thing that uh, I started noticing in terms of my, my fashion faux pas situations is, you know, sometimes with items that are a little bit too, too dressy for day, a little bit too, too, or right on the cusp where it borders on, you know, this, this is like nighttime attire. It's actually to me it's a huge fashion faux pas to hold that stuff and think that there's only a specific time to wear it and I'm gonna call it a fashion faux pas because you miss out on the opportunity to explore what you can do with it you know can you take those sequins and can you tame it down by maybe pairing that sequin top with some more neutral cardigan sweater over some type of like you know i don't want to say skinny but maybe slender jean or slender slack that'll carry you into the boardroom 
or it'll carry you into a business meeting or it may carry you through a weekend. Um, I, I, I've learned that putting those those special items or those those special pieces that you know we deem for evening to the side, I think that that limits your creative ability and what you could put together to bring something that's so extreme and so ooh, this is evening and buttons and the sequins and you know th to tame it down and make it make it make it truly workable in a everyday I'm going to work look so yeah I, I think uh, for me one of my fashion faux pas is overlooking those things and just thinking that they're meant for a special occasion and, and they're not they're meant to be taken out shown off and worn because they can work. But I think that that kind of bleeds over into something else that um, I've done. And this is like, you know, you, you sometimes when, you, when you're obsessing over something like too, too much, like you, you know, you put an outfit together and you think, ah, oh, you know, this is it, this is it, this is just, this is totally it. I think that that can like go down the road of like looking and I am so guilty of this and I had to learn to just stop, stop. But like trying to make it like too, too perfect. Like, you know, the, the, the button is here and you know, it has to fit and everything has to be in line and everything has to be, you know, perfect, 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 perfect. When in actuality, yeah, it, it just looks like you're trying way too hard. You're trying way too hard to give an image of, you know, the perfect aesthetic. And it's interesting because last year when I had a chance to um, travel out of the country and to go to Paris, and we'll get into this later on as I get into this discussion, I, I observed a couple of things and I'm going to share that with you. And it, it actually stopped me in my tracks. It, it really, it really, really did. So... Yeah, but just, you know, thinking everything has to be a perfect look is a faux pas that I have had to kind of work on overcoming because, as we all know, there is no such thing as perfection. As, as close to it as you might want to get or as close to it as I might want to get, that's, it just doesn't work like that. So, um, I think that one of the, one of the other, um, interesting things about the faux, the faux pas issue is that um, I've also made the mistake of thinking that a certain type of a print or a certain type of a, of a pattern, if you put it all together, you know, it was just going to make, you know, all rocket logic sense because, you know, it's all in the same family. And so if you put it together, great, no, wrong, because if it's too much of a good thing, you end up looking like a, a a fool. And I don't care if it's leopard print. I don't care if it's stripes. I don't care if it's a, if it's something that has polka dots in it. I have had to learn that you got to, you got to kind of back that up and, and, and limit it to one piece. Let that be the statement piece. Let that be the one piece that if you want to, you know, if we're talking about leopard print, let that be the, the piece that roars or has the most vocal component that's going to pull the eye to you. It could be your blouse, that's not a print. It could be your skirt. It could be a pair of shoes, but whatever it is, or it could be some type of pattern. You know, hound's tooth is really big. So this fall, um, and if that's going to be your focal point, you know, that one hound's tooth skirt, let that talk and let all your other things get a little muted in the backs. Not that that, that not that they get lost, but they mute back so that that one outfit can speak up. So yeah, too, too much of a certain print, it, you know, has been a situation for me where I, you know, put something on and you would think that my closet threw up on me because I was like, oh, let me reach for it. Mm -mm. And I will say this, you know, the older that I've gotten, the more resolved I've moved towards understanding that it's not necessarily the less is more, because I, I respect that. I really, really do. And to take one thing off, yeah, I, I really do. But it's just knowing when enough is enough. Really, just knowing when enough is enough. Um, and that's interesting because 
I have had to, in, in this in this thing, it just understanding essentially, you know, what works, what, what I really like and what I enjoy is, I've had to really get a really clear understanding of what my colors are, what, what, what works for me. I'm going to tell you right now, one of, one of my favorite colors is in the world to wear is black. And to the point where for secession in years, I would not break the stride of, of, of black. You know, Carl Lagerfeld and I could have been BFFs because if it was a black, something that was black or black that maybe had, you know, a little bit of white in it, I, I was right there with it. But that's something that I, I had to really uh, understand that black is not the only color that works on me. Yellows work, whites work. Uh, pale blues work. I had to get an understanding of being clear about, you know, what what in the genre of the rainbow of colors works best for you, other than being stuck in a rut. And essentially, you know, being being a person who loves black everything, um, it had me stuck in a rut. And I needed to realize, and I had to realize, and come to a, a factual clear crystal clear understanding that in order to expand my wardrobe i had to separate from that one focus and realize that you have to introduce color to your wardrobe because at the extent of feeling like and i don't know if you guys have had this happen but i've had it happen where i just you wake up in the morning and you're like, well, what am I going to wear? You know, what, what, am, what am I going to wear? What am I going to wear? Because you just get you just get sucked into the vortex of this one color. And then what you find out is that that one color in any type of whatever it is, dress, pants, skirts, blouses, that's the only selection you have to reach for. And it sucks. It, it absolutely sucks. It sucks. So knowing your colors, you know, what, what flatters you beyond just the basics, you know, it could be brown, it could be white, it could be yellow, it could be pink, it could be a whole lot of things, but know, know your colors. If you don't want to make a fashion faux pas or be stuck in a fashion rut, because I think fashion ruts lead to fashion faux pas, honestly, know your colors learn 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 colors and i've had to really get an understanding of it's okay to have a color pop it's okay to have pops of color in your closet and that includes accessories bags all of that had to break out of that serious 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 rut but speaking of clothing um this is <laughs> woo honey this is something that, you know, I, I, I unfortunately, I'm going to admit, I, I have made that mistake and, and, and it, it's embarrassing. But I think everybody else who is in the viewing audience has had this happen to them too. And that is when you don't know your underwear, and let's just be real, you don't know your underwear. You have on a, a, a body shaping dress, a body con dress. And you decide, instead of wearing a thong or a G-string, that you're just going to wear a, a high-waisted brief or something that you think is just going to smooth out. Nobody, no. Oh, no. 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 And anything that I talk about with you guys and share with you guys, it's, it's things that, that I've gone through. You know, it's, 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 it's. Is it embarrassing? Yep, absolutely. Does it make you uh, feel self-conscious? Yes, it does. But it teaches you that you, you've got to be mindful because it's not just about the exterior, you know, the exterior layer. It's about what's underneath that layer. And it's, you know, underwear doesn't even have to be, you know, panties. It has, it could be shapers. It could be anything that, that would be a, a layering tool to help you look the most flattering appearance wise in a given dress or pants or whatever it may be um, and, and you know know your underwear because if you if you don't know your underwear and you're just saying oh I'll just put this on and you know it'll be fine people look and it's not that they're being you know 
it's not that they're being voyeuristic, but if it's lumpy and bumpy, and this includes bras, because if you don't wear the right shape bra and you get a, a lump back here, it you know, people see it and it just it just changes the dynamic of the whole intent of the outfit. Plain and simple. So I've had to realize that just as much as I love clothes, I have to understand and and appreciate the fact that underwear or all those things that that make up the underwear genre help with the overall appearance. So I had you know had to had to learn from a couple of mistakes and and you know as we've gotten into this and mastered things a little bit better, we don't we don't, we we stay away from those underwear mistakes, but. Um, I think one of the other things fashion faux pas wise that um, I've had to learn and, and this is this is crazy because this this actually happened while I was in Paris um, and it you know I, 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 I understood it but I didn't really understand it until I had a chance to just you know walk around and just pay attention to it, it didn't matter if it was a man or a woman i just I, I paid attention to the style technique and one of the things that i learned and this is this is people say this and i am going to give french women their props when they say that they have the most effortless chic looks that is a hundred percent fact I have never in my life just stood on a corner, you know, when you're just, you, you know, you're going through and you're looking and, and, and you, you're, you're people watching and all this. I have never just stood on a corner and, you know, while you're waiting for the, for the light or whatever it is to change, you know, all the traffic and the beauty of the architecture, you see how beautiful and effortless the women are. There is no, no try hard. It is when it's when the word effortless, effort, effortless chic comes into the equation. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know who does it better than they do. And it's no disrespect to to you know my girlfriends here in the United States. I'm here too. But I, I when I when I look at those women and they just they I mean hair is just like I just woke up like this. Little bit of makeup. Nails aren't even perfectly done sometimes. It's just, it's just the right amount of undone to the point where it is so chic. It, sloppy doesn't even come into the equation. It just doesn't. It just, it's just, you, you, they get dressed and it's, it's no thought. And I think that they do it naturally. They don't take the incredible effort to try and look effortless. They do it naturally because it's just what the flow is what the flow is and and you know I, I think I do think that Kate Moss is an excellent example of that some people may disagree but I actually I respect her her style quotient because she's she's like a chameleon she she she's one of those people who can put on anything I think Naomi Campbell is another person who can just put on anything and look amazingly effortlessly chic stylish all of those things wrapped together and i think fashion does work better getting dressed does work better when you when you don't think about it when you can just relax about it and you can go on about you know whatever it is it's going to be but um the biggest thing i've had to learn too um in terms of making fashion mistakes is before you even think about leaving your house, check the mirror. You don't know if it's a tag hanging. You don't know if it's a situation where, you know, you've got, uh, God forbid, you know, you, you had a sip of coffee and now you have a stain at the bottom of your skirt that you didn't even know about because you're multitasking doing 50, 11 other things, which we all do. But I, I, I am guilty. I've had to learn. You've you got to look at yourself before you leave the house. Your face, whatever your outfit is, you know, from the front to the back. And um, 
one of the things that I did to get me into this habit was um, in my home at the bottom of the landing of my second set of stairs before I leave and go out of my home, there is a mirror, a full length mirror where I can see the whole totality of the circumstances of the outfit. And you better believe if I hit the landing of that step, that bottom step, and I turn to the side, and I turn to the back, and I check myself out, and I see that, hmm, this does not work. You best believe I'm going to run upstairs and do a presto changeo and fix it. Whatever the lump, the bump, or the miscommunication is in the outfit or in the underwear, we're going to fix that. Period. So, but I think that the, the biggest um, fashion faux pas, faux pas of all for me, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you know, on a deeper level, is that when I was younger, I used to use fashion a lot. Um, as the sole source of my, my existence, my, my source of how I expressed who I was. And I think that was to the detriment because of the fact that you have to have a voice. As the individual, you have to have a voice. You have to be the one, you know, that is uh, the messenger. Your, your clothes can only speak but so much, if you will. They're only expressing what you're interested in and what you like and, and the rest of those things. However, you have to be more than the clothes that you wear on your back. And for me, it took, it took a moment to get that, to realize this. You know, I, I have never been more stronger as a person that I am now at this point in my life, you know, I am 49 years old. I have no problem with telling you guys that I'm comfortable in my skin. I like where I'm at at this point in my life. I respect where I'm at at this point in my life. I don't need to pretend to be anything that I'm not other than who I am presently, which is matter of fact, who I am point blank period. So, the evolution is what I like. It's the, 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 the self-confidence, the acceptance, being able to express myself, regardless of what I have on, I shine through. So in the end, th that is what I am sharing with you guys today about what uh, fashion missteps or miss the mark fashion, the fashion faux pas uh, has cumulatively uh, meant to me and what I learned from it. So let me know uh, in the comments below what your takes are. What were your biggest fashion faux pas? What, was, what were some of the things that you absolutely were mortified with um, and realized, oh my God, I just, I really I messed this one up. Messed up. But anyway, that's all I have for today, you guys. I love you all very much. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Tap that bell so you can get notifications um, when a new video goes up. My, my videos go up every Sunday. So until next time, I just want to tell you all, love you. Talk to you later.